Hello, thank you for helping us with the musical costumes. This tutorial is how to do the black bodice that you can see pictured here. Um, it's just going to sit separately on its own because sometimes it might be worn separately. Um, it's going to be self-lined, um, so it's got uh, two front pieces and four back pieces, and it closes at the back with Velcro. These ribbon trims are put on separately. Um, we don't yet have these little metal or gold bits that are pictured here um, but I'll find something to do with that and then these flowers at the top are actually going to be fake flowers that are um, possibly stitched on maybe even hot glue gunned on we'll see how we go so yeah watch the tutorial and good luck with making them all thank you this is what the pieces will look like for the black bodices the one the three ones for the older girls are going to have darts in both the front and the back um, so that's those ones if you haven't pinned darts before that is the first step that you will do um, you basically it comes as uh, you'll see the white chalk markings of a triangle um, and you pinch the two sides of the triangle together um, so that they meet and then you pin along uh, you pin them together so that you can see that pin is showing that those two lines are meeting front to back and then you stitch from the top or you can start at the bottom, it doesn't really matter whichever way your pins are going um, along the line all the way down just making sure that at the top you do go right to the very edge so that's going blurry on the camera um, so you do actually go right to the very edge of it um, almost going off the fabric you don't want to stay in too much from the fabric from that um, folded edge of the fabric. So you'll start for the older girls by sewing all of these darts up um, and then we are going to join this, them at the side seams. Uh, so the reason that we are doing uh, this is going to be self-lined so it's you've got two front pieces and four back pieces. The reason we're doing it self-lined is because I decided it would be just as much work to um, do it self-lined or to do it where we have to overlock everything and hem around all of the sleeves and the neckline and, and bottom and everywhere. Um, so I think it's probably just as much work to do it with two layers. Um, and this will give a bit more structure and body to them then. I think they'll just look a bit better. Um, plus it means you can do it without having an overlocker. So they'll have a nice professional finish at the end. Um, and there's gonna be embellishments on them, but we're gonna put those on um, we'll, we'll put them on before we sew the, um, to the front and the lining piece together. So first step is to do the, sew up the darts. Now they should look like this. We're going to iron those in a moment, um, but we can actually do the next seams and then iron it all together. Um, so we're going to join all of these at the side seams. Do not join the shoulder seams. They get joined a lot later. They're one of the last things that will actually get joined when you um, do a lined sleeveless bodice. Um, so all you need to do to join the side seams is to put right sides together. Um, in this one I must have cut it very quickly and I've not cut them very well. Um, so if you do find that the lengths are not quite even down the side, like I just noticed with this one, um, prioritise them meeting up the top at that sleeve seam, or sorry, the armhole seam. And you can um, allow them to be a little bit longer at the end. So these are going to get sewn uh, with one and a half centimeter seam allowance now. So I've sewn those side seams now and I've given the side seams a press open so they're laying nice and flat and I've um, pressed all of the darts as well. So I like to press my darts so that they're going inwards. So the, the front darts, they're both going in that way. The back darts will be going, looking like they're going out towards the side but really when that's closed on the back, they are looking inwards. Um, that's because it kind of creates the illusion that whichever way they're going towards that piece is sitting above just a very very slight illusion but it's just the way I like it doesn't make a big difference as long as they are nicely pressed now 
I've actually decided that I'm going to put the ribbons on at the very end so that I can see where all of the uh, finishing line is because obviously it's still got seam allowance all around here. So what we're going to do next is progress with sewing these uh, two pieces together. So have one of them facing right side up and the other one facing wrong side up. We place this one on top and we're going to line up all of these seams. Now once these are nicely lined up, and I'll be pinning them as well, uh, we are going to sew, just clean out the areas. Okay, we are going to sew all along this line, but not along the shoulder. So we won't be sewing any of the shoulder seams. So all along this side, all along the curve of the armhole, all along the square neckline, and then skip this and then all around the curved neck uh, curved armhole and then all the way along here um, and you can include that little bit there as well um, so when you get to the armhole bits and you can do it as you're pinning them as well on the piece that is currently looking up towards us I'm going to just do a small fold um, a little bit smaller than a seam allowance amount so uh, you know, maybe just over a centimetre um, and I'm going to pin that down I know it's a bit hard to see because I've got black on black here so it probably doesn't show up that well um, so I'm going to pin that down and I'm actually going to stitch over top of that when I come around to that seam I'll show you this on the camera a little bit closer same thing on this side when I come around to that seam I'm going to stitch along there. Just make sure this is showing for you on the camera. So we'll be stitching up here. We'll be missing this bit and not sewing that bit. And then we'll be stitching down here but catching this folded over edge. And you'll see why we do that a little bit later. So now I'm going to go and pin all of these around and sew it. Now they're all sewn together and I also I forgot to show you this one on the last video but I also did stitch down and this is from the wrong side so right sides are together stitch down on one of the sides so this is actually the back one of the back joins but not the other back join that one is still open and I've stitched down along the bottom too um, now it might have just been my bad cutting but it was a little bit uneven on this bottom um, so that's fine to just level that off if yours is uneven as well and trim off the excess. Uh, but it's all getting turned in anyway. Now before we can turn it into the right side, we need to put lots of snips through it, um, particularly around curves and around corners. Um, because if you imagine turning this in the right way, um, there's not going to be room for all, you know, once that needs to get folded down there, there's not going to be enough room for all of it down there. And it's going to make the whole... Um, sleeve line or the whole armhole um, scrunching in a not very nice way. So we just work all the way around putting lots of snips um, or pretty much almost to the line of stitching. Make sure you definitely don't go over the stitching but you can go right up to it. As you can see, once that needs to get opened out, it will be able to. Those will be able to fold out and sort of flare out from there. So now that those are all snipped, um, and those corners are going to be able to be turned out. I've just noticed this one, I probably haven't snipped quite far enough. In those corners, you really do need to snip 
um, right down to the stitching line so that it can turn out properly. Right, so now I'm going to turn the whole thing the right way around and we'll give it a really good press. Now before you press this, it's important to know that the side that has the turned in um, bit up the top of the shoulder seam, that's going to become our wrong side or our lining side. Um, and the good side is going to be uh, the one that currently has not got it turned over. Um, so that's good to know when you're about to go and iron it. So iron it and make sure that this side is sitting really nicely because that's the side that we're going to see. And also before you iron it, it's a good chance to just check that everywhere is turning out nicely. So there was one area in here where maybe I hadn't quite snipped far enough into that corner, but I think it's eased out enough now that it's sitting okay. Um, and just you know, look for any bits that it's pulling a lot because it might mean that you need to just come in and put another snip in there or make, the, make sure the snip goes all the way up to the line of stitching. Um, so when you iron it, you can also try and iron it so that the good side rolls around ever so slightly to the lining side. I'm not sure if that's showing up on the camera. Like this. Um, and that will just mean that we don't see anything that looks like this from the good side. We just see a nice, now it's gone out of focus again, I apologise. We just see a nice straight edge on the good side. So yeah, make sure yours is nicely turned out and give it a good iron. So that's laying beautifully and flat now that it's had a really good iron. Um, take your time to really pull out the seams so that um, you're not sort of ironing them in that way. Um, but they are sort of pulled out flat. Um, the last two steps we need to do are to join the shoulder seams um, and to just give this one a turn in as well. Um, we're going to put um, just some Velcro to join this. Uh, that's because it's a very quick change, so Velcro will be nice and quick for them. So with the right side facing up, the good side, so those turned bits are facing down at the moment, I'm folding the back over to the front on one side um, and pin between. Oops, if I brought my pins over from the sewing machine. Okay. Um, pin along, and again, I apologise that it's probably hard to see, um, but you want to pin above the folded bit. Um, from both sides because you don't want to sew that folded bit, you want to sew right above it. So you can actually try and match up the folding, the folded edges rather than matching up those raw edges. As you see from both sides, oh, I've caught the fold on that one. So from both sides, I've not caught the fold, I'm just going to be sewing there. So what's then going to happen is on my right side, I'll get a nice seam here and on the inside, um, I'll be able to tuck the seam um, into the pre-folded areas once it's sewn um, and that will seal it off really nicely like that. So pin the other side as well and then go and sew those ones. Now there is multiple things that you can do to finish off the wrong side of this join. Um, I did a very sort of quick cheat way of um, pulling the two, I'm sorry if that's not really showing up with the black on black, um, pulling the two bits together and doing a zigzag over them um, without without actually top stitching it. Um, so you can do that little cheat thing um, or you could actually hand stitch it which will give a nicer finish but is not completely necessary for a stage piece. Um, so the last thing that we need to actually sew on this would be closing up this 
seam um, or this side bit. Um, so just give it a little turn over. Um, we do want to leave some overlapping where the elastic will join. So just about a centimetre turn in and pin and then you're just going to top stitch all the way down that once it's all nicely turned in and pinned. To close up this back, um, we're just, as I mentioned, just going to do Velcro. So on the bit that sits out like that, that's going to get tucked in behind. So we want the rough side of the Velcro facing up or down on there. Um, it's a little bit hard to pin through, but you can have a go pinning it on in place just to help you. Um, and we're going to do, depending on which one, if it's a really little one, you might only need three pieces. Uh, if it's a bigger one, you might want to go with four pieces. Um, I'm not going to do Velcro the whole way down because it tends to um, bunch in a not very pleasant way. So that means on this side, we need the Velcro on the um, inside and we need it to line up um, and we need the fluffy side facing out. And you can just pin those on and then just do a quick check that they're lining up before you pin the rest on. Add on the ribbon embellishments. Um, you can do it in one long strip with the ribbon so that we're not um, having to have raw edges constantly need to be secured. Um, so I started here and I did fold over that raw edge a little bit, went across here, did a zigzag. Now you kind of need to make this V shape quite even. You can readjust and do it by eye a little bit though. Um, and then we're doing a straight line across the bottom and then moving that back to this way to create the zigzag. So you want to keep this in line here. If you need to do a little chalk marking on that, you can, or place pins to sort of mark the line that you're following. Um, there's no set rule for this, it's just doing it by eye. So picking what you think looks best. Now we are also going to have some other little um, metal, hopefully sort of metal decorative trims that look like they're holding these ribbons on in place. That will be the correct folk look. Um, but I don't have those yet. I haven't been able to find what I want to use for those yet. Possibly we'll end up just doing a beading decoration there. Um, but for now, just hand stitch this down in you know, the six spots where it's being held and make sure there's a turned over edge. Um, and then that is fine to just leave them like that. So that's done.